ओम भूरभुव स्वत सवितुर्वरेण्य भर्गो दीम धियो यो नचोदया ओं शांति 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 नमस्ते माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज सेकंड वीडियो ऑन भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा डिवाइन मैसेज टू द ह्यूमिनिटी फॉर गेटिंग ब्लिस एंड लिबरेशन द टॉपिक इज ट्रांसेंडिंग द गुनाज सीकिंग लिबरेशन इफ मैन वर्शिप्स ए मायरियाड डीटीज ही विल नॉट गेट freedom from affliction if he destroys the ego in him he has no need to seek liberation he will be liberated itself he will be liberation itself embodiments of divine love the phenomenal universe that we perceive is the product of the three gunas satva rajas and tamas it is sustained by the three gunas the gunas again account for its dissolution the gunas are the life breath of the cosmos they are responsible for all that happens in the cosmos only through service to the divine cultivation of bhakti devotion and virakti detachment can man transcend the three gunas for this purpose man has to acquire three qualities anashakti desirelessness virakti detachment and upeksha equanimity anashakti is the absence of all desires accept the desire of god all other acquisitions are to be given up and one should rely on the divine virakti does not mean renunciation of hearth and home and betaking oneself to the forest for penance giving up of bad thoughts and feelings is true tyaga renunciation and leads to yoga you may enjoy worldly things but there should be no sense of possessiveness of mine and thine upeksha is the absence of concern for the future it is the freedom from expectations and hopes god looks after the welfare of true devotees the desire for worldly objects can plunge one in endless misery desires are like a green pumpkin which will sink in water a desireless man will be like a dried pumpkin which will float in water he will be able to overcome the pulls of the mundane world and even aspire for a godly life he may not be keen about mukti liberation but he will not give up devotion god looks after yoga akshik akshim god looks after yoga akshimam progress and welfare of such a person here and in the here after because being desireless and detached his thoughts are centered on god to secure the grace of the divine in this way is itself a kind of yoga to preserve that grace is to ensure one's aksimam well being this is known in vedantic parlance as apratakshya prapanam securing what is not easily attainable it can be got only through grace filled human effort some spiritual exercises are necessary for this purpose 
the three gunas as the universe is constituted by three gunas tamas rajas and sattva and is permeated by them the first stage in spiritual sadhana is to put to an end the tamasic quality the tamo guna is characterized by murktvam fullness of tenacity a tamasic person lacks intelligence and is inclined to indulge in meaningless questioning and argumentation it is essential to get rid of such tendencies every issue should be deeply studied and the conclusions should be digested only then will the experience be rewarding and less verbal debates or every trivial matter should be avoided such controversies result only in provoking bitterness instead of harmony they do not serve to reveal the truth the tamasic person is incapable of perceiving the truth and cannot realize the divine he will be caught in an endless cycle of birth and death the person with rajoguna is one who is excessively happy when he gets what he desires his ego gets inflated thereby when his desires are not fulfilled he develops hatred thus for the rajasic person whether the desires are fulfilled or not the effects are not good he is consumed by anger and bitterness rajasic qualities make a person hot blooded and hot tempered the third quality is sattva even this results in a form of bondage it becomes a redeeming quality when all pure and meritorious actions are done as an offering to the divine the three gunas are represented by different colors tamas is depicted in black it symbolizes darkness and ignorance the rajoguna which rouses anger and hatred in a person excites his blood and turns his eyes red is represented by the red color the sattva guna which is characterized by purity and dedication is represented by white color everyone in the world is creature of one or the other of these three gunas one's actions are based on these gunas the varnas categorization of man under different types in the gita has been made on the basis of their guna karma vibhaga rasa respective qualities and actions at birth every person is ignorant when he dies he should die as a gyani a man who has perceived the truth likewise everyone is a sudra at birth this means he is an agyani ignorant person but when he dies he should die as a brahma brahmana agyani who has realized brahma agyani but when he dies he should die as a brahmana a gyani who has realized brahma no high or low among the varnas it is on this basis that the four varnas brahmanas akshatriyas vaishya and sudras had come into existence those with predominantly tamasic qualities comprise one group those who are prone to excitement and anger form another category and those who are inclined to renounce everything and who are pure in thought word and deed form a third group the ignorant and dull-witted were described as sudras the excitable the crazyus and the high spirited were described as the akshatriyas those who were devoted to god and led a pure and sanctified life were described as brahmana 
These categories were associated with qualifies and actions. Straying from this basic truth, the social system took a wrong turn. The result is that today's society is riven by innumerable, innumerable divisions and conflicts. Actually, among the Varna's groups, one cannot be called high and another low. For instance, says Vyasa classified the single corpse of the Vedas into four different collections. Among the four can one be ranked higher than another, all have equal status and authority, are equally sacred and preach the same path of righteousness. Likewise, when men are classified according to their qualities and vocations, one category cannot be regarded as superior to another. No one is competent to determine such ranking. It is through narrow-minded interpretations that such distinctions and divisions have been made to the detriment of social harmony and progress. Birth alone is not the basis of caste. The right to interpret the Shastras is given to the Brahmanas, but Brahmanas have been defined as those who have made a thorough study of the Shastras, who have no self-interest and who live up to the Shastraic injunctions. Anyone may acquire these qualifications. They are not confined to any caste on the basis of birth. Only qualities and actions are determining factors and not birth. A Akshatriya is one who is prepared to lay down his life for his country. The nation's safety should mean more to him than the protection of his body. This attitude of sacrifice may be displaced displaced by displayed by anyone and he should be regarded as a yaksatriya all those engaged in agriculture have been described as sudras everyone needs food if food is not grown by the so-called sudras the world will perish the entire purpose of classifying people according to their qualifications and functions is to ensure that person in such category carry on their duties with dedication. It is the failure to maintain the purity and sacredness of the system as envisaged by the Shastras that has resulted in indefensible divisions and social chaos. Awareness of oneness is highest knowledge. All are children of God. He is the sole Lord of mankind. People may seem to differ in their names and forms and in their beliefs and practices, but the parent is one alone. Recognition of this basic truth of oneness is Brahmagyana, knowledge of the Absolute. This knowledge is not gained by studying the scriptures and holding metaphysical discussions. What has to be recognized is the truth that every one being in the universe is an embodiment of the Supreme. Awareness of the unity that subsumes the diversity is the highest knowledge. Mere bookish lore is of no avail. Practical living is what matters. Expounding a philosophy is easy. Living up to it is difficult. He alone is a true Siddhanti, perceptor, who practices what he professes. Time is wasted on metaphysical dialectics. We need today men who practice what they have learned. Such persons should explain to the common people the truth about righteous living and transform them into good and honest men. Then is a statement in the Gita that is best for a person to adhere to his dharma and that follow, following Paradharma is fraught with the danger. 
what is Savadharma? Sava refers to the Atma. Sava Dharma means Atma Dharma, the Dharma of the Spirit. Adherence to the law of the Spirit is beneficial. It will protect one from any kind of danger. It will ensure peace. What is Para Dharma? Para means that which is responsible for good and bad actions, namely the body. Pradharma means all actions based on the body consciousness. All such actions have consequences which have to be gone through in successive lives. Men are caught up in this perpetual cycle of birth, death and rebirth. They do not know what is in store for them at any moment or place. This is the perilous state of man. The correct meaning of Swadharma. The Gita reference to Swadharma is ordinarily interpreted as meaning one's own dharma or duties attaching to the caste or community in which one is born. With regard to Arjuna, for instance, it is considered that he was a Akshatriya and should adhere to the Akshatriya Dharma. This view is not correct. The Gita does not speak about the Dharma of Akshatriyas, Vaishyas or Sudras. It only affirms that these categories are based on guna and karma, qualities and actions. Therefore, if a person has the tamo guna and indulges in actions of a tamasic nature, he must be regarded as a sudra, even if he is a brahmana by birth. One who devotes his entire time to the contemplation of God and does sacred acts is a Brahmana, regardless of the caste in which he may be born. Brahmana is the one who seeks God. Obsessed with the distinctions of caste, creed and community and indulging in futile and meaningless controversies, People should not degrade humanity. All are brothers and sisters. It is the basic truth that must be propagated in our society today so that spiritual values may grow. <coughs> spiritual values may grow. Bharatiya Dharma is eternal truth. Bharatiya culture is not the product of ephemeral efforts. Bharatiya Dharma is the embodiment of unchanging and eternal truth, unaffected by time, place or circumstance. Without realizing this supreme truth, people are polluting their minds with conflicts of caste and creed. All religions have taught what is good and everyone should lead a righteous life based on this knowledge. If the minds are pure, how can any religion be bad? Let every Bharatiya take heed of this fact. Every effort should be made to purify the mind. All the religions are different paths leading to one and the same destination. All devotees should experience this truth and live up to it in their daily lives. Setting an example to the rest of the world, their devotion should not be artificial. They should adhere to the right path, lead righteous lives and thereby experience enduring bliss. Only then will their spiritual effort be fruitful. What use is there in meditation in which one counts the beads of a rosary while his thoughts are centered on some petty thing? Listen to the words of the wise, purify your thoughts and concentrate your mind on God. God can be installed only in a pure heart. The aim of all sadhana should be to purify the heart. All the available time and opportunity should be utilized for this purpose. It should not be wasted in any way. Means to transcend the gunas. You have listened to this discourse for two hours only if you put into practice at least one or two of the things you have heard will you have heard will the time you have spent here been worthwhile. First of all, 
banish from your mind's differences based on caste and religion. Deepen your faith in God, nourish the spirit of anashakti, desirelessness. Cultivate virakti, detachment and experience bliss. These are the means to transcend the three gunas. The Lord who is an embodiment of love can be experienced only through love. As he is an incarnation of truth and righteousness, he can be realized only through Satya, Dharma, Truth and Righteousness. Always bearing in mind the supreme importance of Satya, Dharma and Prima, you should sanctify your lives by rendering dedicated and disinterested service. The revered sadhus present here have expounded to you profound truths in simple and intelligible language with appropriate illustrations from real life. Their exposition and your listening would have served a useful purpose only if you try to practice at least some of the teachings. You have had a golden opportunity listening to them. You must make good use of it. Do not jump to conclusions abdicating your discrimination and do not deny the validity of your own experiences. Stand on your strength. Be unmoved either by adulation or denigration. Follow my lead. I am unaffected by ether and march on alone. Undeterred and of my own accord, I am my own guide and witness. Have full faith in this. Man's Divine Destiny The Divine is one without a second. Eko ehem bahu senam parjayatihi. I am one, let me become many for the sake of progeny. Willing in this way, the Divine assumed a myriad amazing variety of forms in the universe and taught in the Gita the threefold paths of karma, jnana and bhakti to enable humanity to realize the magnificence of the divine man has been engaged in exploring the infinite wonderful secrets of nature in this marvelous creation in all possible ways but because of the vagaries of my, his mind intellect and ego man has failed to understand the true eternal spiritual basis underlying everything in the universe and has lost himself in the pursuit of the external phenomenal world as if it were the only reality. In the process he has failed to realize his own true nature and has totally perverted his mind. The simple truth that everything is permeated by the one has been lost sight of. Krishna reminds man of grievous error. It is, it is to remind man of this grievous error that Sri Krishna declared in the 18th chapter of the Gita in verse 61. Iswaraha sravbhodhanam herbesarjana thistahai. The Lord resides O Arjuna, in the heart region of all beings, and went on to adjure in the 62nd sloka. Thameva Sarvanam Garcha Sarvavena Bharataha. Take refuge in Him alone with all thy heart, O Bharata. This means that that if the Lord dwells in the heart of all beings, he must be residing in Arjuna's heart also. Hence the injunction, Thameva Sarnam Gacha, means seek refuge in yourself. It must be understood from this that whatever one may say or do, he is doing it only to himself and for himself. 
the Bhagavad Gita begins with Dhritarashtra's reference to Dharma Aksetra Kurukshetri. Dharma Aksetra is the seat of Atma. Kurukshetra is the body which is the source of all actions. It is the combination of the Atma and the body of the Aksetra. Aksetra Jana relationship which explains the human predicament. By forgetting the Atma and involving himself in Deha Dharma, the claims of the body, man is subje- subjecting himself to endless suffering. He grieves about things which are not worth lamenting and does not grieve for the things that ought to make him sad. This state of delusion is the result of his identifying himself with the body and forgetting his inherent divinity. If he realizes that he is one with the omni self, he will have to cause for sorrow. He will be aware that truth and bliss are inherent in his spiritual reality. When man realizes that the divine is all pervasive, there will be no room for acquisitive selfishness or divisiveness. Divisiveness. When Dhritarashtra made a distinction between his sons, Mama Kaha, my children, and the Pandavas, he betrayed his spiritual blindness and the ignorance of the unity that subsumed the multiplicity in the world. Everything testifies to the glories of God. Love for the divine is devotion. Devotion is not something subjective and concrete. It is an inner experience which springs from the heart. As you think, so you become. Hence, the heart must be filled with good feelings. The sense must be engaged in good actions. When the eyes are turned towards God, all creation appears divine. When you wear the white kind of spectacles, you see everything clearly. But if the glasses are not correct, you get a distorted picture and your eyes are spoiled. Likewise, if your heart is filled with love of God, all your feelings are sanctified by that love. Other undesirable thoughts drop away. Devotees pray to the Lord to come and reside in their pure and tranquil hearts. Where the heart is impure, then there is no room for God. If the Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita, there is a canto devoted to the vibhutis of the Lord. What are these vibhutis? The glories of God. Everything in the universe testifies to the glories of God. Everything is a gift from the Divine. To the one who has unqualified faith in God, then is nothing good or evil. He welcomes everything equally. When a child is well, the mother gives it all eatables. But when it is unwell, it is given bitter medicines by the doctor. Likewise, the man who is groping in the darkness of ignorance has to be enlightened by the discipline of wisdom. The enforcement of such discipline does not mean that the divine is angry or displeased. There is grace even in the severity of the discipline. It is like a surgeon's knife which is used to perform a necessary operation. The devotee should look upon pain and pleasure alike as designed for his good. He will not then be affected by troubles. He will regard them as stages in the evolution of his consciousness. Pain and pleasure are inseparable twins in life. One leads to the other even as the new moon culminates in the full moon. These are the manifestations of the wheel of time, expressions of the divine will. Ahankara is the root of all troubles. Man should get rid of Ahankara, the feeling that he is the doer. As long as the ego is dominant, 
the atmic consciousness will not develop the egoist cannot recognize the atma it is egoism that is at the root of all men's troubles it is the kind of delusion that is based on the misconceived notion that the body is real and permanent the truth is otherwise from an early age one should recognize the awareness sense of the body and the senses and control the desires prompted by the sense organs desires are insatiable the pursuit of wealth power and position can only end in misery instead one should take refuge in god and dedicate all actions to the divine subdue desire to achieve inner peace <laughs> in spite of his precious birth as a human being man leads a life worse than that of the animals animals are not consumed by envy they do not take pride in their possessions they have no bank balances and have no monthly salaries they live happily from moment to moment content with whatever food and shelter they can get immense knowledge and skills have increased and <clears throat> his moral caliber has declined man has to discover the secret of good life he has to realize that he has taken birth not for enjoyment of worldly pleasures but to realize his divine destiny by the cultivation of good qualities and by performing good actions to indulge in demoniac demoniac actions while having the human form means degrading human nature of what use are wealth and position if one has no peace of mind a quiet conscience is man's highest jewel to achieve inner peace desires have to be subdued and all thoughts should be centered on god engage yourself in service activities in a spirit of dedication do not hanker and leadership true service consists in helping the poor and the forlorn in the society with humility and dedication this is mal service to the divine dil mein ram hath mein kaam rama in the heart and service with the hand prepare yourself for serving the people with god in your heart and strength in your arms so i end this video here and the next video on satya sai baba's message to humanity will continue thank you for watching this video please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel thanks a lot namaskar my dear friends